Hello everyone, I'm Professor Lee of Dr. Wild Love TV. Feeling lethargic and tired, even though you've slept enough and haven't done anything too hard, is a very common symptom everyone experiences. Feeling lethargic means you lack energy and cannot produce as much energy as you need. Since mitochondria are where all living things on Earth, including humans, can produce energy to live, the first thing to do is to restore mitochondria function. Mitochondria are a type of bacteria existing in the cells of all living organisms on Earth and are independent life forms. Myro means thread in Greek and chondrion means granule and because its appearance resembles a grain of rice and its internal structure looks like a rolled thread. Mitochondria, which were independent organisms, were eaten by other bacteria 2 billion years ago but because they have the ability to create enormous energy using oxygen, that is, 10 times greater than that of the host cell, so they ended up coexisting with the host organism that swallowed them, which is the historical moment when all multicellular organisms on Earth came into being. Mitochondria are at high risk of DNA damage due to the oxidative stress generating the process of continuously creating energy, so they pass on some of their DNA to the host cell, and the host cell grew in size and evolved into a multicellular organism by increasing the DNA that creates proteins using the energy created by the mitochondria. And one of those organisms is us humans. Among the tens of trillions of cells in our body, red blood cells which make up about half do not have mitochondria. Mitochondria use oxygen to create energy and red blood cells transport oxygen to other cells that use oxygen. All cells except red blood cells have an average of about 100 to 3000 mitochondria per cell and they are symbiotic bacteria that replicate and live on their own inside our cells. According to the Rivals of Cell, a famous book by Louis Thomas, the first recipient of the Scientist as a Poet Award established by the Rockefeller University, half of the dry weight of an adult body is mitochondria. Wow, isn't it amazing? Mitochondria consume more than 90% of oxygen we breathe and when we provide food, they create energy called ATP. All life activities such as thinking, planning, moving hands and feet, beating the heart, breathing and digestion are possible only when ATP is supplied. And other than this, about 50 kg of ATP per day. And all of this is supplied by mitochondria. Isn't that amazing? ATP is created, consumed and continuously created and the process must not stop. The more energy a cell requires, the more mitochondria it has, and the brain and the muscle cell have the most. In the brain, they are consumed a lot by the NAK pump, which creates electrical signals necessary for information transmission. However, when mitochondria function decreases, the information transmission function slows down, so brain cell activity will become dull. Then, concentration decreases, you become dizzy and you feel mentally tired. When mitochondrial function in muscle cell decrease, you feel weak, lethargic, and heavy, making it difficult to move. Among adipose tissue, white adipose tissue is where fat is accumulated. However, brown adipose tissue has a thermogenic function, so it has many mitochondria, and so it is brown in color. However, when mitochondrial function declines, heat production decreases, making it difficult to maintain body temperature. Therefore, in order to improve the lack of energy, fatigue, lack of concentration, and heavy body, the function of the mitochondria must be restored. The method is 1. Increase the number by creating new mitochondria. 2. Remove damaged mitochondria through the autophagy process. 3. 
increase the adaptability of mitochondria according to energy demand, 4. Increase the efficiency of ATP synthesis, and 5. Prevent damage to mitochondria caused by oxidative stress. The medicinal plants we will study from now on are medicinal herbs that have proven such effects. Just by consistently drinking one or two cups of tea a day, it's a very good way to make mitochondria healthy. Are you excited? Okay, let's get started. Before talking about herbal tea therapy, the most important method to use in combination is exercise. This is because it's the most effective in activating mitochondria and has been proven through clinical studies. How should I exercise? I'll explain in order of the least effective. First is strength training. This is exercise strength muscle using body weight or equipment. It's less effective than aerobic exercise, but it still increases the density and efficiency of mitochondria. Next is aerobic exercise such as running, cycling, and swimming. It creates new mitochondria and produces more ATP. And it's more effective than strength training. You can do exercise continuously supplies oxygen to the point where you are slightly out of breath. Next is high intensity interval training, which shows fast effect than aerobic exercise. This is exercise you do high intensity exercise that makes you breathless for a very short time and then alternate with low intensity exercise that makes you comfortable. For example, run hard enough to have a conversation or ride a bike for 4 minutes, then walk or pedal for 3 minutes, repeating 3 to 4 times. Sprint interval training is similar to high intensity interval training, but it involves alternating between high intensity exercise at the level of sprinting and low intensity exercise. For example, run at full speed for 30 seconds, then work for 3 minutes, repeating 3 to 4 times. Lastly, I will tell you the best way to exercise is to do aerobic exercise and strength training together. Young people or those who are trained can do high intensity or sprint interval exercise instead of aerobic exercise. Now, when you exercise from now on, for example, if you exercise for 30 minutes, do aerobic exercise for 20 minutes, and strength training for about 10 minutes, then your mitochondria will increase in number and function better. Now, the first up is the root of the perennial plant of Rhodiola genus that grows in high mountainous areas and fat in rock crevices. This root is called golden root. It restores energy in patients with chronic fatigue or exhaustion by mitochondrial activation. In addition, it also reduces stress hormones, protects nerve cells, and improve symptoms of chronic lung disease. What's the name of this plant? It is Rhodiola rosea. Rosea now is the above ground appearance of Rhodiola rosea. It's a plant lives in Himalaya, Europe, and high altitude mountainous region of Asia, and it's a sedum family plant. Among the plants you know, it looks similar to the Golden Stone Club, right? They are all the same sedum family. It's a plant with extremely strong vitality growth in crevices of rocks, overcoming the stress of a strong ultraviolet rays all day long in high mountainous region where oxygen is scarce and cold. As they struggle to survive in harsh conditions, they have developed such a strong root, and humans have discovered this root have an amazing effect. Let me tell you about the main active ingredient that made this plant survive. One, Rosevin is a tonic and a component that resists physical, chemical, and biological stress. 2. Cerisrocide improves mitochondrial function and also has a neuroprotective effect. 3. Tyrosol is a powerful antioxidant. Taking Rhodiola rosea will give your exhausted body energy. This is because 1. It prevents mitochondrial damage with powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effect. 2. It creates new mitochondria and increases ATP production. 3. It restores mitochondrial function that is already damaged. 4. It removes damaged mitochondria. 5. 
Finally, its unique effect is that it further suppresses mitochondrial damage by reducing the stress hormone cortisol. I'll tell you about the effects proven in actual control clinical studies. There are reports it is ineffective, but there are more research reports that it is effective. It improves physical and mental fatigue in healthy people as well. 100 chronic fatigue patients were given it for 8 weeks and fatigue began to decrease after 1 week of taking it and continued to improve for 8 weeks. It also has an anti-stress and fatigue improving effect in sorry exhausted stress-induced fatigue patients. In addition, it improved not only resurgence and fatigue but also increased exercise ability, for example, endurance, power and post-exercise injuries were all significantly reduced. In addition to mitochondrial activation and energy recovery, there are a foreign effect in dementia patients, the nerve cell protection effect, improvement of oral mucosal inflammation, a side effect of anti-cancer drugs, improvement of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease symptoms, and improvement of depression and anxiety have been proven through clinical studies. I'll tell you how to take it. If you search the internet, you will find many capsules, tablets, liquid, and powder product. After get it, take it according to the recommended dosage. Since the content of rosavin and salicylate varies from product to product, you should check it. Depending on the content of these active ingredient, the recommended dosage varies from 200 to 600 mg per day. To make root powder tea, Pour 250cc of boiling water, 1 teaspoon of dried root powder, stir for 5 to 10 minutes, then drink as tea twice a day. It's good to use as a traditional medicine herbal tea. By the root, add 5 to 15 grams of dried root in 1 liter of water and boil for about 100 minutes. It's good to start with 5 grams. Drink it like tea twice a day, regardless of meals. It has a subtle floral and sweet scent, slightly pungent and earthy scent, and the taste is slightly bitter and astringent, followed by subtle sweetness. If it tastes too bitter, you can add honey, lemon, ginger, or sweetener. Let me summarize again who should take Rhodiola lossia. In traditional medicine in Europe, Asia, and Russia, it is used as a tonic to overcome various stress and fatigue, to increase endurance, improve memory and concentration, anxiety and depression, to enhance immunity, to enhance sexual function, to treat altitude sickness, to improve cardiovascular health, and to improve longevity and anti-aging. However, it's recommended to take it in the following cases where modern medicine has proven clinical effects. 1. If you are healthy but occasionally feel uncomparable with physical and mental fatigue, 2. If you have chronic fatigue or stress-related fatigue in the state of exhaustion. 3. If you feel tired after exercise. 4. If you have chronic lung disease, anxiety or depression in addition to fatigue and lethargy, you must take it consistently for at least one month to see the effect. If you want to take it for a long period, you should recommend it to follow the advice of a specialist. Finally, I will tell you about the side effect. 1. If you have allergies, stop taking it first, and if it is severe, visit the hospital. 2. Do not take it before going to bed, as it may cause insomnia by irritation symptoms. 3. If you experience anxiety, excitement, headache, dizziness, or dry mouth symptoms, stop taking it first and restart with a small amount. 4. It has a blood sugar lowering effect. So stop taking it first if you have hypoglycemia symptoms. Precautions 1. Pregnant women breastfeeding avoid because there is still insufficient safety data. 2. If you have an existing disease such as mental health disorders such as anxiety or bipolar disorder, cardiovascular disease or autoimmune disorders, consult your doctor in advance. 3. It may enhance the effect of drugs, especially antidepressant, and increase the side effect. In particular, you should be aware of serotonin syndrome, which shows mental state changes 
uh, robin nervous system hyperactivity and neuromuscular abnormalities by excessive activity of serotonin in the nervous system may occur and in this case you should stop taking it. For it may affect blood pressure and blood sugar levels so people taking prescription drugs should be careful and check blood pressure and blood sugar while taking it. 5. To prevent insomnia, it's better to take it in the morning and early afternoon rather than in the evening. Now the second half. It's the root of a plant in the Solanaceae family, grows in dry areas of Central Asia, Africa, and West India. It's also called Indian ginseng. It has the effect of promoting the creation of a new mitochondria and recovers from lethargy and fatigue associated with chronic stress. In particular, it has additionally been proven to activate immunity and improve sleep disorders. What is the name of this plant? This is Ashwagandha, which now is the above ground part grows in the drier region of Central Asia. The leaves are cloud green with white. The leaves, stems, and fruit are also used medicinally, but the root is the most important. It looks like a red fruit, and this fruit is called Indian winter cherry. It looks similar to the Chinese lantern fruit that is saw a lot as a child, right? They are both plants of the same Solanaceae family. The root is the most important medicinal ingredient, and it's called Indian ginseng. In Sanskrit, Ashwagandha means horse smell, and it was named because the raw root smells like a horse. I'll tell you about the main active ingredient. The effect is the combined effects of several ingredients. One, with a light and with a ferrin are the most important ingredient that have a mitochondrial function activation, immunomodulation, anti-inflammation, anti-cancer, neuroprotection, and antioxidant effects. Two, alkaloids such as somniferin, somniferinin. Three, flavonoid with a ferrin A with a non. Four, pseudoindocide that have immune cell activation effect. Taking ashwagandha increase energy and vitality. This is because one, it prevents mitochondrial damage with powerful antioxidant action. Two, it activates genes that create new mitochondria, increasing their number. Also, three, it increases ATP production with enzyme activation. Let me tell you about the effect proven in actual control clinical studies. One, improve chronic fatigue and chronic stress, especially reduce cortisol levels or stress hormone by 20% and increase serotonin. When administered to men over 40, fatigue was reduced and vitality increased. Two, increased muscle mass, strength, and endurance in healthy people and reduced muscle damage and fatigue by exercise. 3. Increased cardiopulmonary endurance in athletes. 4. There are more than 10 studies on anti-anxiety and anti-stress and the anxiety level was reduced by 40% in about 10,000 patients. 5. Lastly, the most proven effect among ashwagandha studies is the improvement of sleep disturbance. Therefore, you will wake up refreshed in the morning. In addition to mitochondrial activation and restoring energy, there are other important effects. One, the most important effect is the effect of enhancing immunity. The immune enhancing effect is shown in healthy people, chronic disease patients, and cancer patients. Two, it enhances sexual function in men, increasing libido as well as testosterone and DHEAS levels, hormones related to sexual function. 3. Improved menopausal symptoms in women. 4. In patients with hypothyroidism, thyroid stimulating hormones and thyroid hormones level improve. 5. In patients with mild cognitive impairment, memory and concentration improve after 8 weeks of taking it. In addition, 6. There are also clinical reports of improving in arthritis symptoms and 7. Antidepressant effect. I will tell you how to take it. If you search the internet, you will find many capsule, tablets, liquid, and powder product. After get it, take it according to the recommended dosage, but the recommended dosage varies depending on the purpose. 
For example, if the purpose is stress relief, 125 to 180 mg per day, and if the main purpose is to help with sleep disorders, 120 mg per day. To make root powder tea, pour 1 teaspoon of dried root powder into 250 cc of boiling water, last tea for 5 to 10 minutes, and drink twice a day as tea. It's good to use it as a traditional medicinal herbal tea, by the root, add 2 to 6 grams of dried root to 1 liter of water and boil for about 100 minutes. It's safe to use up to 10 grams, but it's better to start with 2 grams. Drink it like tea twice a day, regardless of meals. For anti-stress effect, it's recommended to take it in the morning or early afternoon rather than in the evening. Ashwagandha tea has an earthy woody scent and a fair taste due to the main active ingredient with no light. Of course, the higher the tea concentration, the more bitter. Let me summarize again who should take it. In traditional Indian medicine, it's used for immune activation, muscle strength, muscle endurance enhancement, stress, anxiety, high blood pressure, diabetes, convulsive disease, arthritis, dementia, and other inflammatory disease. However, it's good to take it in the following cases where the clinical effects have been proven in modern medicine. 1. If you have resurgent fatigue accompanied by decreased immunity, taking it will improve your immunity and fatigue. 2. Chronic fatigue, especially fatigue accompanied by chronic stress. 3. Increased muscle mass, muscle strength, and muscle endurance, and reduced muscle damage and fatigue after exercise. 4. Resurgent fatigue accompanied by sleep disorders. 5. Resurgent fatigue accompanied by decreased sexual function. 6. Resurgent fatigue in menopausal women. 7. It will be very helpful for research with hypothyroidism. It's safe for up to 2 months of use, but since there is still a lack of research on the appropriate dosage, it's recommended to take a break of about 2 weeks every 2 months of use and receive expert advice when using it for a long period of time. Finally, I will tell you about the side effect. 1. In case of stomach problems, stop taking it for 2-3 to three days and start again with a small dose. 2. In case of allergy, stop taking it and visit a hospital if it is severe. 3. Since it has an effect of improving insomnia, you may naturally experience drowsiness. In this case, you can reduce the dosage. 4. Since it has a blood sugar lowering effect, stop taking it if you experience hypoglycemia. 5. If you experience symptoms such as arrhythmia, low blood pressure, or respiratory distress, stop taking it. Precautions 1. Pregnant women breastfeeding avoid because there is still insufficient safety data. 2. Since it can stimulate the immune system, consult a doctor if you have an autoimmune disease. Also, 3. If you are taking immunosuppressant, sleeping pills, thyroid medication, prescription drugs for diabetes or high blood pressure, your doctor should be aware of it. Now, part 1 of the lecture is over. Thank you for your hard work starting today. Next week, in part 2, we will start the remaining 3 important herbs from the top 5. Stay healthy everyone, and I will see you next lecture.